Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio, Business Building Warrior. I'm so glad you've chosen to spend a few moments with us today. We've got some pre-recorded content today since it's the weekend update, but it's probably content you haven't heard unless you join us on a regular basis for our live Monday night Q&A sessions with our entire community. Man, some good questions happen when we do that, and we'd love to share the questions and responses with you. That's what we do on our weekend updates. We'd love for you to join us some Monday. It's open to anyone in our community. The best way to hear about these and to get the links you need and participate is to be part of the free Facebook group. There's a link at silentgym.com to that free Facebook group. Jump in there. Most Mondays we go live quite often. It's me, sometimes it's some other folks on our leadership team answering any e-commerce or Amazon questions. Then we compile the best questions and answers into a weekend update for those who couldn't make it to the live session. So that's what we've got for you today. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekend. Thanks for taking us along. I'll cut right to the chase. Let's jump right into the content. Let's see what the team compiled for us today. My name is Jim Cockrum. I'm the guy that started this Facebook group several years ago as we approach about 75,000 members in our free group. It's moderated by about 100 of us who are the coaches, content creators, and leaders in our community. And we love helping business building warriors like you use the internet creatively to launch and grow the business of your dreams. We love multiple income streams. We love all kinds of creative solutions for growing legitimate businesses that you can be proud of. But the vast majority of the time, especially if you're new, we're going to start you on Amazon, which is where everyone on our leadership team has at least a presence. Many have seven figure plus businesses. We have a coaching team, about 60 of us who are coaches who all have very robust businesses built on Amazon using the systems we teach in the Proven Amazon course to help our students succeed on that platform. We've been doing e-commerce coaching for over 20 years at this point, coming up on 10,000 coaching students served, making us the longest running e-commerce coaching organization in the world, to my knowledge, which is pretty cool. I've been earning a living from the internet as the only income for my family and I for that length of time, plus a few years, over 20 years. And I've seen it all. I've tried it all. I know who the players are in this industry. I can smell a scam from a mile away. I'm not perfect at it, but I've been getting better over time. And I can tell you, you should probably bounce just about anything you're considering off this community before you jump into it, because you're going to have a lot of really smart people who are here that can help you kind of think it through. Uh, One of the best litmus tests, I'll just give you a little tip here. If you're looking at other business opportunities, this goes for any business opportunity, in my opinion, you can... Look for the group of people online who are doing that business successfully and hang out with them for a short period of time before you make the leap. So if you're considering coaching or a course or a service or an idea or a concept, find the people who've been doing it for a long time who can tell you what the rough edges are, the realities of this situation, how much work, blood, sweat, and tears really goes into this, how many people are actually succeeding with this. Hang out with those people. Find them before you pay some money and jump in with both feet, simply because that's going to protect you 95% of the time from getting into something that's just a terrible idea. We see people wander into our group all the time after having wandered down really bad roads for a length of time. They tried some drop shipping or some done for you service or some discount warehouse that we buy in bulk and then many sellers buy from us. Like all that stuff is just a tragic train wreck waiting to happen. And what it all has in common as well, all those terrible business models online, they all have one other thing in common. There's not a group of people that you can hang out with saying, yeah, this is great. I do it all day. Been doing it for years. I figured it out. Here's the rough edges. Here's what could go wrong. Here's what I wish I knew when I was a new player in this arena, right? You need to find that community. Once you find your people, then you can find that business model It makes sense, but find the people first. That's my tip if you're new, especially. And I'm proud of the fact that we have, from my vantage point, the most robust, success-filled, and 100% transparent about the challenges of the business model group on the planet. And I'm also proud of the fact that I think we've found the lowest hanging fruit, lowest risk, lowest learning curve business model on the internet with the highest odds of success. And that's what we teach to our new students. If there was something better, we teach that instead. But Amazon, as many of you probably know, some of you don't, so I'm going to hit the statistics. 
Amazon dominates e-commerce. They are about half of all economic activity in e-commerce any given day in the United States. All the other million plus websites share the other half of the action. Amazon is about half the action. And of that 50% of all the action that Amazon dominates, about 30 to 40% of that is resellers. That's us. That's people helping fill the underserved shelf space at Amazon. Amazon has made huge commitments to be able to sell anybody, anything, anytime quickly all over the United States. That's an ambitious goal. They can't even come close to being able to accomplish that without the effort of a bunch of us. And we've found ways to find the underserved listings on Amazon, bring everyday, easily sourced inventory to those listings and help you build a profitable business doing it. We've interviewed hundreds of our successful students on our free podcast, silentgym.com. You can go listen to it and hear inspirational stories. People all over the world buying and selling in the United States primarily using the systems that we teach in the Proven Amazon course. I could talk for three hours about that. I'm going to cut myself off right there because I know most of you have probably heard me say those things before. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Oh, there's my buddy, Nathan. I had your face covered up, man. I got to introduce you to those of you who are on here with us right now. Let me give you a little intro and see what's on your mind, Nate. We haven't caught up in a few days. So I told you earlier, I don't know if Nate was here yet or not when I said it, but we've got the longest running e-commerce coaching program in the world. As a matter of fact, I've used the same coaching director for all of those 20 years. So I've known this guy that you can see on the screen if you're live with us, Nathan Bailey, for that for that many years. And we've run our coaching program that long, you know, thousands of success stories and students. It's pretty incredible. Uh, so Nate, what's on your mind today as we kick off another week with some good business building warriors, man? And I, I got to tell you, Jim, I, I appreciate the trust that you put into me and in holding, you know, my feet to the fire. And, um, you know, making sure that, that everybody that, you know, comes in and experiences the, my silent team family, right. Is feeling not only welcome, but they're able to establish enough trust with the processes and the things that we teach that they have confidence, confidence, the keyword to actually go out and try it. And then as soon as you go out and try it and you get some, some result and, and like, whoa, that worked. Wow. You know? then, then that, that builds and grows. And that's, you know, the one thing that you were saying, you know, there's a lot of fast buck operators out there and, you know, that people will say, Oh, trust, but verify. No, don't trust, but verify, be skeptical. I would be skeptical of you if you weren't skeptical of everyone out there and us. But what you'll find is you come closer into this community that there really is a group of people in here that are, you know, like our family members that actually care about you getting results like we do. And that's kind of the, the mission, you know, Jim and I, we've always been into this, you know, not to give a big rah-rah speech here, but the mission is bigger than the man, right? Our mission. I mean, I want, I want to change the lives of people, you know, not just a little bit. I, I want to do it profoundly. And I think we've done, I mean, we've got about 10,000 success stories, but and even still, even though I could pull out and just spend hours with you saying, hey, let me show you this one. Hey, let me show you this one. Let me show you this one. Those people are not you. You're mm-hmm. different. You have a different entrepreneurial fingerprint than anyone I've ever met. And it needs to be taken on a case-by-case basis to look at, you know, what what are your circumstances? So I think it's beneficial to, you know, talk to, whether it be me or somebody here in our coaching office or somebody in the community build a relationship and have, and get these different perspectives because there are many people that have come before you. I mean, Jim and I have been here doing this for 20 years. We've seen a lot of failure and through that failure, we can extend you the courtesy of showing you how to avoid that failure. And so for free, I would take advantage of it through the community, through the Facebook group, through the podcast, Um, do a call with us just to, just to discover, okay, this is what I'm up against. This is what I've got going on. What do you think would be the path that would be best uh, for me? Because mm-hmm. you're going to be a little bit different than somebody else. So, it, you know, I would start you out on the things like if I were looking at it like, okay, this is my mother or my good close friend that is getting into this business. What would I say to them? Right. Yeah. And, and, and I do how have, I you them? know, I, I go to church on a Sunday morning, Nate, and I look around and in the room with me are 
four coaches and eight students. Like these, this is what I tell my friends. This is what I show them. So when someone comes, it's like, Hey, I've heard, you know, a, a guy that I've known for 30 years was just on the podcast a few days ago. I ran into him about a year ago and he's like, Hey, how's that Amazon thing going? I'm like, it's going great. Just in passing, you know, I'm not going to dump on him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, things are good, man. Business is good. We're helping a lot of people. Business is good. Selling a lot of stuff online. So he went and buys the course, buys coaching. Next thing I know, he's jumping in. Now he's a coach. He's, he's talking about being a coach on our team because he's a year in and he's killing it, right? So like, I yes, when you say friends, family, like this is what we tell our friends. When someone from high school looks me up like, hey man, I heard you got some Amazon stuff going on. This is what I teach them. There's no secret sauce over in the corner, only for special people. Full transparency, man. And you talked yeah. about unique locations and relationships and such. The story that popped in my head, I haven't told this story in probably a couple of years. So there's probably a lot of people who haven't heard it. But we had a coaching student of ours come to us from Jamaica at one point. This has been years ago, about 10 years ago. And we said, okay, what unique opportunities do you have? What does your unique location and the people you know make possible? There's things that you have in Jamaica that we can't touch. You know, if you're not familiar with Jamaica on the island, they basically have utilities and tourism. That's about it. Like if you're not involved, if you don't have a job with utilities or with tourism, you don't have a job. He's like, well, the, the only thing I know of is, you know, we've got some coffees here that are pretty popular on the island that, that sell, but I, you know, I don't know how those would sell in the U.S. He started boxing up coffees from Jamaica, sending them to Amazon FBA. Every time he'd send in a new box or a crate, it would sell instantly. He's like the coffee king of Jamaica now. He's built two homes. <laughs> just, his business exploded. I hear from him from time to time. He's just living large, doing great. A student came through our community and we just said, hey, look around you. Who are the people you know? What are some of the products that are maybe unique to your area? There could be opportunity there. Now, now we start most students, the vast majority, I say 95% of our students, we start them off with replens because you really need to understand the landscape of Amazon before you start diving in, introducing new products, trying to launch your own brand. Those are dead end, scary roads to go down as a new seller. We've seen it time and time again to the point, Nate, where... I've been fond of calling our community a hospital for the e-commerce industry because people go <laughs> out and they try like. their things. You know, they drive their car too fast off a cliff, you know, and all, it, virtually, of course. And then you're like, oh, someone please help me. I've made a mess of this whole thing, right? Okay, come on in. We're going to teach you the basics. You're going to earn money while you learn. There's no big risk you have to take around here. We're not going to ask for tens of thousands of dollars and hope it works out someday. That's not the way to go. A few hundred bucks and start putting money in the bank and grow organically. So I'm yeah. very proud of our approach. Speaking of organically, I mean, that's kind of our approach is by word of mouth. I mean, over 20 years, people finding out about us. One one thing I'd like to just ask of everybody on this, how did you find out about the My Silent Team community, Jim Ooh, that's Cochran? That's a cool question. Put it in the, put it in the chat. I've and, never and, asked uh, that question before on these Monday chats. I would love you, to hear. And, and I bet we're going to see a friend, a friend. It's not going to be Oh, I saw an ad. Although we have started doing some ads just this week after 20 years, we're starting to try some ads. So we'll see how that goes. But we love this, this friends referring friends type of vibe around here. Yeah. It's a culture. Brother-in-law. The culture that we've created is really, I've never seen it anywhere friend, else. Friends you'll from never, church. You'll never, you'll never um, be in a Facebook group where we work, where someone works so hard just to keep the riffraff out. And there's so many people that you, that don't know you from Adam, but they are willing to comment on your post and answer your question and say, oh, this is, this is, uh, you know, I found out this way and now I know the answer. And I'm happy to share that with you. And I just found that, that, that if you, it's the, the candlelight versus cake analogy, Jim, if you could just spend one minute like explaining yeah. that to people so they- I've gotten they pretty quick at explaining it. that. It has to do with a poverty mentality versus an abundance mentality. And we are we go all in on abundance mentality. And some people like to make fun of us and say, oh, it's only positive stuff allowed there. No, we we tackle the hard issues all day, every day. It's not about whether you're willing to tackle hard issues or not. We, ta we get in the mud, blood, sweat, and tears required. We say that off the top. But an abundance mentality says, there's plenty of success out there for all of us. That means we can cooperate together and help each other grow. We're all going to get better for it. Rising tide raises all ships. The, on the other hand, the poverty mentality says only the lucky few ever win anything. And I'm probably wise to keep my secrets close to my chest. And everyone here's a competitor, right? So the cake versus candlelight is you either see success as a cake sitting in the middle of a room. We're all around the outside edge of this room and someone 
says, go. And we all run to the middle with our forks and stabbing each other and starting to stab and get as much cake as we can. You see there's success that way, like a cake in the middle of the room and we're all fighting to the death to get some of it. Or you see success as candlelight, meaning we're all in a dimly lit room. A few of us have candles. Most of us don't yet, but we're picking up free candles and lighting each other's candles. And suddenly the room just becomes bright. And to the benefit of all of us, by sharing our light, things are better for all of us. So the way you see success really does determine whether we can help you or not. If you see it as cake, that's going to be rough because you're going to look around and see competitors, you know, around every corner and bad news is mean, oh no, that's the world is ending. It's terrible. No one can help me because you haven't made any relationships. No one cares when you stumble in the dark and no one's there with you. Candlelight, we're all there helping each other out. Rising tide raises all ships. And Amazon has recognized this community many times. I've been asked by Amazon executives. I don't know if you've been on Amazon's chat forums, Nate, lately, but it's a train wreck, man. It's like you go there to get depressed and have people call you an idiot. <laughs> like that's basically well, people what people ask for. about us in there. People ask yeah, yeah. about us. And I get a lot of referrals from people that say, well, you know, I was in the the Amazon forum and I I've been scammed three times and I finally went in there and asked. Who is real? Who can really teach me and get results? And, you know, your name pops up. I mean, also in the eBay forums too. And and, and it's exciting to be, but I don't like to go in those groups and just, I, I, I try to stay away from the negativity and focus on the positivity. And there's nothing more positive in my life than the culture in this group, the friends, the relationships that I've made. And so you know, if you want to make a couple grand a month on on online using the internet creatively, this is a great place to start. And that's easy, easier than you may realize, yeah. but it will start through validating these concepts that we teach, not just from us, you can hear it from us, and, and but watch for the other people that are getting results um, and that they're posting their results in the group. And if you get uh, results, you post it in the group too, because- yeah. Do you know how many of those posts candlelight. we have? Nate, you know how many of those posts we have in the group of people posting Thousands. their success story result? Over 2,000 at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's that's nuts. There's nothing else like, there, like that out there. So when we say that's an abundance mindset, it's not just we're enforcing, making sure everyone stays in a good mood. It's not. We're just constantly bringing success stories because what we teach works, right? Yeah, the replens model. Finding underserved products that are hiding right in plain sight, mostly right there in your area. I mean, I don't even want to say it because you you probably won't believe it, but some of the stuff that we found over the weekend, I mean, I'm talking about just your general everyday stuff. I'll tell you, it's a dental product, right? Putting it in a three pack uh, and bundling it with something else. I have a course if you want to check it out in the Proven Amazon course that we just launched. It's called the Proven Branded Bundles course. Um, putting this with that, what an amazing combination. People love it. And, uh, you know, it's like walked in, Hey, uh, can I talk to the store manager? You know, the store manager, what can I help? He thinks I'm going to complain. I'm like, you know what? I love this store and, you know, I want to buy all of this on the shelf, but I didn't want it to look weird to where I just grabbed a shopping cart and went, and just threw it all in a cart and cleaned it all out because then no other customer is going to be out for all your other customers. Maybe it's easier if I just ordered it in bulk mm -hmm. through you. And if I order it, you know, in quantity, can you get me a little bit of a discount on it? And yeah. And now you're building relationships. It's nuts. And now, uh, in fact, I got to get running here. I've got to go pick up a truckload. I'm going to pull my truckload up to the back of a Walmart Mm -hmm. um, I got a new store manager, Jim. Uh, like, I couldn't believe it. Like what I found, you know, I mean, but this stuff is hiding in plain sight, but yeah, I mean, it's really, really easy for me and I get really excited about it, but nothing gets me more excited when you take somebody that's new to the game that just is out there going, man, I'm, I'm just not confident. I'm just clueless. I just, I can't get it. I'm just, I'm trying, but it's just not working. And then the light bulb turns on. Yeah. Boom. And then all of a sudden it's like floodgates of opportunity and you're just like, whoa, 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 you know? So go slow and steady. Don't get overwhelmed by the process, but you know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step and, you know, get comfortable. And the way you do that is by establishing, I mean, you're probably, you may not be, if you're new to this, you may not be comfortable enough to go and talk to a store manager and say, Hey, I'd like to order this in by the case if you could. Right. But once you know the numbers, once you, you know, get that little bit of confidence. 
It's it's like the snowballing effect of it. And if you have someone to lean on and to, to gain that momentum, oh man, that that just that makes a world of difference. And that's I think that's why me and Jim get on here, you know, and I hope you guys feel the real sincerity about what we do because I mean I've literally changed people's lives. I had a gal call me that was a client from 10 years ago. Hey, Nathan, I just wanted to call you again to say thank you. I'm so glad my husband's not a truck driver anymore. Uh, We made 300 grand last year on one strategy that you taught us. It's changed my life forever. And I just just felt like it'd been too long since I'd talked to you. And I just wanted Mm -hmm. to send you a message of hello. And hey, what's up? What's new? What else you got? (laughs) You know, that to me is like, that's, that's my life. That's why I, I love what I get to do is because, you know, I'm empowered. I'm blessed to be able to, to give people just, you know, little golden nuggets of information. And then you do the rest. It's exciting. You talk uh, about, you know, the common store of Walmart and, and when people start talking about retail arbitrage quite often, the, the mistake they make is they think they're looking for items they can buy cheap at a retail store, like Walmart or somewhere else, or maybe it's a clearance aisle and then sell for more on Amazon. So they scan the barcodes. I could teach someone how to do that in about you know 10 minutes. Compare the price. Is price A lower than price B? If so, yes, buy it and flip it. Well, that is a really difficult way to build a robust business. You can make some money on the weekends flipping stuff, and that's great. But we we want to help people build a system. Uh, and so I've got, you know, I don't know if you've seen the latest total. I'm coming up on 100 examples from my inventory. Uh-huh. This is my Amazon seller account. I've got a hundred examples posted in our Facebook group now of items that I'm buying from places like Walmart or Kroger or online, you know, maybe one of the online stores that we use. The price you buy it for really doesn't matter. It's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. Because I'm finding those ASINs that are selling so fast, those listings on Amazon where there's so many people that want them in the 150 warehouses that Amazon has around the United States. Don't think of Amazon as one central warehouse. It's not. A lot of people make this mistake. They think Amazon is one central warehouse where millions of people go to find the best price. No, there's some people that use it that way. There's also millions of people that say, I want this now. I don't care what the price is. Two hour delivery, prime now, put it on a truck. I want it on my front porch two hours from now. That means when they're shopping, they're looking at one of Amazon's 150 warehouses. Not all 150 looking for the best price. They're looking for the fastest. So once you understand that, you can hop on these really popular ASINs. And if you'll notice, there's sometimes one of them that I showed just a couple of days ago. These are all free examples in the Facebook group. 50 other sellers are on this thing. 50 people selling the same item. And you'd think, man, I don't want to be in an arena with 50 other sellers on anything like I do. If it's a fast moving item, I'm going to send in a few units. I'm not going to be the guy selling 2,000 units a day for a quarter profit each. I don't want to be him. That guy's life is miserable. I will be the guy that sells four or five units a month at $15 profit. Just park it, let it sit. Eventually, some busy mom who's going to be very grateful that she can have it in two hours instead of having to drive around town looking for this thing is going to be able to snag your unit. And and once you understand how to play that, that's just one of many strategies now. Nate's talking about another strategy. There's always room for buy low, sell high. We love that stuff too. There Mm -hmm. are so many strategies you can learn in this community and uh, we love teaching them. Yeah, and it's all there in our free Facebook group and our free podcast. People who want to go further faster, we say get a coach because you're going to wander around a little bit if you don't. And we have the best coaching program in the world. But until you know, like, and trust us, that's just a sales pitch. So it's like going that. to Disneyland. It's like going to Disneyland, right? Everybody wants to go to Disneyland. And then they find out, okay, I'm going to go to Disneyland and I'm going to wait in this line for an hour and a half before I can get on the ride. Coaching is the fast pass, right? Yeah, but it's like, like having a like, Disney employee walk you to the front of the line. And have he's you right here. Disney. He's right here. Why do people buy travel size toothpaste, right? Well, I found an audience. I'll give you a quick hint. I found an audience. I'll tell you the story. Airbnb is pretty popular new thing going on Airbnb. Well, what are the things that Airbnb need to buy in bulk? I know how I, I find the audience and then I figure out what keywords they search for by, by finding out where that audience hangs out to learn more about them. And then I'm not really selling these products right in bulk. Well, I am right, but I'm selling keywords. Mm-hmm. I'm selling keywords 
and demand frequency, yeah. right? So a, a keyword frequency. And then once I figure out what keywords they search for, then I go right directly to where I can get the product. And like I said, it's usually hiding right in plain sight, right under your nose, maybe 10 minutes away from where you live. Um, and, and the opportunities, once you start seeing it that way and you realize, oh, wait, people have demand for this sort of thing. And then you, you realize, man, I had no idea people would buy diabetic test strips that way, or, uh, that, you know, that there is a need for, you know, baby formula travel kit, right. Uh, or just those keywords that, that people are going to punch in. Who's the audience? What keywords do they search for? And then go find the product. And, and I can tell you, Jim, just to go back and verify, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to someone that says, man, I've failed at this. I failed at that. I got bamboozled over here. I got scammed by this company. And, you know, they're very skeptical of us, which is good. I'd be skeptical of them if they weren't skeptical of us at that point, right? And we have to kind of right the ship for them. And we've gotten really good at that, but it's good because, you know, now they know what doesn't work coming into this and they're a little bit more um, apprehensive about making those mistakes. Sometimes we get in and just say, oh gosh, I'm just going to try it and just trust the process. Don't trust, but verify, verify, validate, but don't be afraid to fail a little bit. It's part of the process, but with a coach, that's going to eliminate a lot, if not all of the trial and error, but some people don't need a coach. Some people can learn it straight out of the, the proven Amazon course. I have people that are, that, that come to me that we meet and we, I talk to, they've never had a coach. They just use the proven Amazon course and they're, they're doing three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in sales a month. It's nuts, right? It just comes down to the type of person that you are and that you are choosing to be right. You have a choice. You have a choice in this matter. And that's what, what I like that candlelight versus cake analogy because it's never a lack of resources that are holding someone back. It's a lack of resourcefulness, right? And I think really this community and the Proven Amazon course really is all, all, all the resource you really need going forward. But start at the beginning. Don't start try to start with the easiest path of least resistance things in your mind. I, I used to think that way. And I used to think, oh man, I would never go to a yard sell or estate sell. I'm not going to go dumpster dive. And now that's like my favorite thing in the world to do. And I always find crazy stuff, yeah, right? There's, stuff there's that a whole I spectrum of opportunities, Nate. You, we've kind of hit on several of them. You know, there's, I think we could easily identify 30 different unique business opportunities within our community. And I think what we're, we've gotten pretty good at over time, you talk about the individual approach is identifying there's certain people who have certain restrictions, time, monetary, even relational restrictions, which is a weird one. But like, you know, if someone's going through a divorce, man, that's a rough time to be building a business. Okay. There's still some things you could do when your life is in turmoil, but you know, you can't be launching a, a new private label brand, for example, right? You hit a few yard sales on the weekend, stack a little extra cash with the spare time you have, right? So we've got a model to fit just about any demographic and we call it margin. The, ideally, we all love to be in these places in our life where we've got margin in all the important areas. Our friendships are solid. Our walk with God is good. Faith, right? Our family's on good. Financially, we've got some margin. Our time commitments are down. We're in a healthy state. We're not sick right now. We got margin in a lot of areas. That's a really good place to be to hire a coach and go fast. But if, you've, if you're lacking in any of those areas and you've only got a few minutes, you're a busy single mom who's battling some health issues, for example. We're not going to say, hey, let's go full speed ahead and help you launch a new, you know. No, we're going to help you find some creative solutions, spend a few extra hours a week, put a few extra hundred, maybe a few thousand, and over time scale into these things. So we treat people like individuals, right? I mean, I, I think at the, at the end of the day, that's what it is. And that's why it seems like, oh, wow, you guys have so many different options. Well, it's because everybody's different. Everyone's unique. Uh, but we're using the internet. This is our tagline. We use the internet creatively to launch and grow multiple streams of income. That's the goal, starting with where you're at right now. Man, we got some questions popping in. We also had a great participation to that question you asked. Just about everybody said either a friend or a connection, or they found this on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to very quickly learn that this is just a group of friends. Talking to a group of friends, you're the, one that, you're the one that first said, yeah, Dan was mentioned, man, rest in peace. What a, what a great mentor he was to me, man. I could tell stories all day about that guy, but 
Um, he helped me get connected with Dave Ramsey. Actually, that was the connection. We remember that because he endorsed my book, man, Dan made that all happen. <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, talk about the, you're the one that came up with this phrase, Nate, you'll see more hugs than handshakes when you come to our live event. It's that whole, you know, we're in this together family vibe. And I know if you're new around here, be skeptical. That sounds like we're just hyping that up, but it really is true. I and mean, we've seen people get married and uh, you know, just build lifelong relationships, attend each other's weddings. And this is a community of people that see the world slightly differently. When you start looking at the world through an abundance mindset, people think you are crazy. I mean, I, I jump into other Facebook groups and discussions from time to time and just kind of try to share a little bit of the, you know, what we got going on over here, looking for other people that are willing to have their mind opened to the way the world actually works. The poverty mindset in our culture is so pervasive the number of people that think that the world is a cake and we've all got our forks and we're all stabbing each other and try to get our own peace. That's how most people see the world. That's how most people see business. So when you step into an arena of people that actually see it as opportunity that we can all share in abundance, it, you're weird. You're considered strange. And it's a relief to be able to step into that room with others who see the world that way. I, you know, the longer we do this, Nate, I think that's one of the biggest advantages that we offer this community is the mindset shift. The opportunities, the, the actual strategies are phenomenal, but the yeah, mindset I, shift. I see a huge swing in that. The more skeptical someone is when they come to us and, you know, they're like, man, this better work or I'm going to come and pay you a visit, man. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know love what? those guys, regardless, you're going to come pay me a visit. And we're going to, I guarantee you, we're going to high five, but those people be a hug and tears, probably, skeptical yeah. are the ones that usually, it, 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 mm -hmm. you know, just blow up and they come back and they were like, wow, man, you were right. Well, this is, and then they become your best friend. And, um, but that's, that's, the, I think that's the world that we live in, you know? Um, and I think that the internet is, has become a, 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 a very unsafe place for a lot of reasons, although it is a very safe place to put your time and invest a little bit of money to start a business um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a real business, right? I've been, I started building websites in 1995. That's when I started failing. <laughs> and, you know, uh, there is soon after 1997 hit eBay and went crazy there. And, you know, in 2007 started selling on Amazon. So me and Jim have been around this a long, long time, we know what works and what doesn't. And we're pretty unabashed about saying, I mean, I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but, you know, I can, I will pretty much tell you if you're headed down the path of disappointment and, and failure, I'm going to tell you, um, you know, I can lead you to the water. I can't make you drink, but I will drown you if I need to. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, and I think that, that um, there's a lot of misconception about this business. I think there's a lot of hype around things. And when you really break it down and when you have that aha moment and the light bulb turns on, you can really realize just how simple it really is. It isn't as complicated as one would think. Yeah. It certainly wasn't as complicated as I, as I was making it in the beginning of, of trying to build a real business doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just, you're wise to, to go with people who have been down the road that you're trying to get down. And that's what we do all day, every day around here. Let's get to some of the questions that people are asking and, and raising their hand. And Brian actually, uh, who actually used the the raise your hand feature that I mentioned earlier, for those of you who didn't catch it, you can catch the, uh, use the reaction button on your screen if you're listening live on February 5th as we're recording this. Use the reaction button, raise your hand, have a chat with Nate or I. But Nate, before you go, do you have a couple minutes? Because Brian said he had a question he, for you before you go. I know you got to go pick up a load, you said. But um, wow. yeah, Brian, if you're ready, buddy, let's hear what's on your mind. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Um, great to see everyone's faces or some of them. Come on, put your faces up there. There you go. But um, so I do have something that I had initially, but Nathan, when you were talking about, uh, you know, when you were swiping up all this stuff in the store, a question about that, and I'm going to get to my first question though, after that, I would be hesitant to have so much stock in one thing because sometimes things can change on Amazon where it's like restricted all of a sudden or whatever it might be. So that's my only point, uh, to that, but first my question before this started tonight, I had a couple notes and Jim, I'm just really starting to comprehend the whole inch deep mile wide <laughs> thing. It's starting to click and make a lot of sense and, and putting them 
above the buy box, which is why I really appreciate all your videos on that subject alone. My question to that, though, is that let's just say I'm using Keepa and whether I'm in the store looking at stuff or I take pictures of the shelves and go home and then look at it that way. If I'm just using Keepa, my question is, what are the red flags to what are the noticeable red flags like as far as like uh, noticing um, generic brands or things that I shouldn't invest in, even though the drops are good, like 30 to 40 or even 20. Are there any red flags just using Keepa that anyone can answer that I yeah. would avoid? And, and let mine? me take a shot at what I think. I think I know what Nate will say on that question. Cause you said, it sounds like you're going really deep on one product. Well, he was talking about products where he's really locked into uh, a unique branded bundle. And he okay, just needs someone. bulk loads of this thing now, right? Well, you test small, always, Brian. You always, always test, test small. I'll test stuff and break even on it just to see what kind of velocity it'll sell at um, or to test the waters a little bit. Mm-hmm. But once you've established um, trust with Amazon, you're less likely to run into any problems with restrictions or you know, uh, brand issues or IP issues or anything like that. What's funny is, is that in regards to like the things that we fear, you know, happening, 97% of the things that you fear will happen to you will never happen to you. Right. But, um, I mean, you see one post in the Facebook group about where it happened to one person out of 75,000 people in that group, but I mean, it does happen, but you know, test out small, always test small. Don't ever do any, uh, go an inch, uh, deep, you know, mile wide inch deep and just slowly build up, slowly build up, slowly build up. And, you know, there are certain products that you can only get from certain locations, right? They're like Trader Joe's. I can only get certain things at Trader Joe's, right? And when I know what to get, now that's one you want to be careful with, right? You don't want to go in and go talk to the store manager and, you know, they're going to go, uh, no, thank you. Leave the store. Don't come back. Kohl's, Target, you know, they all have policies against resellers. Although I have some store managers at Target that are they don't care. They're cool with yeah, it. it. We've just, cleared the shelf at many Target stores ourselves. Yeah. It's just a matter of so, building a relationship. Yeah. So go slow and steady. Go small, mm-hmm. you know, duplicate it, duplicate it. Even if you're testing it and you're only breaking even, right? Right. Now you know what will happen, right? And now you can go into it with a little bit more confidence. And, you know, uh, then you can go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper, but just go a mile wide and an inch deep in the beginning, build up some cash flow. Don't gamble with money you can't afford to lose and know what the return policy is at these stores as well. Cause there are times where I'll get stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, like I'm the worst. My wife will tell you I'm the worst at buying decisions. I'll come home with some stuff and, oh man, look at all these baby blankets they had out front and everything. And she'll be like, you idiot. I go take these back. Let's go, you know. Well, but That's I mean, what, like, are there just using Keepa and not not Scan AZ yeah. or whatever? We're, yeah. else We're blending two strategies over top of each other, and I want to be careful to keep them in their own arena well, as we talk yeah. about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Let Nate me, is talking about going and talking to a manager and buying a crate of stuff, it's something that he tested a long time ago, an inch deep, mile wide, mm-hmm. bought a few, slowly worked his way in developed a, a branded bundle around that product and he has no other way to get a hold of one of the components and or or needs, a multi-pack needs, gym or a multi-pack or, and he needs 500 units a month just to keep up with his ace okay. well Air, airbnbs don't want to buy five of these they want to buy 50 right. right and he can't source it any other way except making friends with a local walmart dealer store yeah, Man, because the, the because the wholesale uh, company that distributes for them said no. <laughs> but this already. is but this is not a traditional replan no, that we would teach not. to new sellers, Grayson, because mm-hmm. yeah, that's a that's a significant risk buying that many units of anything. So as a general rule, if you're new, I would say until you've had a thirty thousand dollar month, you don't buy more than a handful of anything ever. Yep, and I don't want to do that. My my right. so my point is is that you know, speaking as a newbie and to all people who are new, mm-hmm. is it basically what you want to have is as many test ASINs as possible. I'm talking three of each ASIN, like yep. 200, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And you're pricing above you buy box do. for sure. Mm-hmm. You're, you mm-hmm. want to go and then bring it down and break even, obviously, is 
you're not going to lose any money. Yeah. Right? I, I get all that. Um, yeah. Well, and for those who don't know what you're talking about, because this may be heard later, Brian, and I'm going to answer your question specifically. And I believe I know exactly what you're answering. Okay. I, asking. I just have to be careful to include everybody, including yeah. the people Try who heard us talk for the first time as of five minutes ago. Right. So you're describing the above the buy box strategy, which is one of about 30 strategies to find winning test worthy ASINs. We described that on podcast episode 554 at silentgym.com for those who don't know what we're talking about. But let's dive into the above the buy box because that is one of my favorite topics lately because the light bulb's coming on for a lot of people. Yeah. So let's go ahead into that. And I could ask your question now if you, I can repeat it and answer it if you'd like, unless you had more to it that you'd want to ask. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, I guess the only thing I was really stressing was if I'm just using Keepa, whether it be OA or RA. Okay. Um, what are the red flags? Right. Gotcha. There are a lot of indicators, actually. You know, the handful that you want to look out for that come to mind immediately. And, but, well, before I jump into the, the three red flags that pop into my head immediately, if it's a fast-moving ASIN, meaning it drops 30 or 40 or more times a month, and the buy box, the typical recent buy box, represents approximately break-even for you, meaning you can drop your price to that point if necessary and be fairly confident, if not 100% confident, that you're going to get rid of that product at about break-even. If those two qualifications are in place, test that ASIN at a high price. There's a lot of people skeptical of that strategy. So what I've done over the past couple of months is provide 100 examples of ASINs from my own inventory where we're doing exactly that all day, every day. Fast moving ASIN, buy box represents break even approximately. I'm going to test at a high price. I'm going to make consistent steady sales to the tune of a handful a day or you know even three, four, five a month. That's fine because they're all very profitable sales. I'm not going super deep on any ASIN. I'm not buying 50 units of anything. I'm not even buying 10 units of anything. I'm buying two, three, four units at a time across multiple ASINs, selling them above buy box all day, every day. If you're skeptical, jump into our Facebook group. There's actually a shortcut link if you want to write this down. I don't know if it'll be in the show notes or not if we use this as an episode. So you might want to write this one down. Silentgym.com slash BB, as in buy box, BB7070. That's a shortcut link right to 100 examples. It may be more by the time you see it of me selling above buy box. But what are the red flags? What are the ASINs that I should avoid using this or any other strategy? One, if it's listed as a generic brand, do not sell against an ASIN that's listed as a generic brand. It's just not worth the risk. Some people get away with it for a very long period of time. So we make a lot of money selling on generic branded listings when it shouldn't be generic. We all know that Crest Toothpaste is not a generic brand. So if you see Crest Toothpaste being sold on a listing that's a generic branded listing, just stay away from it. No need to roll the dice. Some sellers roll the dice and do just fine. Some sellers end up getting suspended and having their money frozen. Stay away from generic listings. That's one. Next red flag. Is there a recent skateboard ramp of death? Meaning it was bouncing along. There was eight sellers and 15 sellers and 20 sellers and then 30 and it's bounced around 30, 40 sellers. And then suddenly it's boom, down to one seller or zero sellers. Uh, this vertical line where we drop to one seller means that brand probably got grumpy, probably hired a lawyer to send a bunch of mean, scary letters, which have no legal bearing on them necessarily, but could get your Amazon account into some trouble. Now I'm just going to move away from that grumpy branded ASIN. Mm -hmm. Not that brand entirely necessarily, but that specific ASIN, I'm going to step away. So that's another. Okay. So we've got, we've got a, a couple red flags so far. We've got the misbranded We've got the skateboard ramp of death. Those are the, really the two big ones that that you should probably avoid. Um, you know, there's there's a handful of others. If I see for me, if I see the brand itself is selling on that ASIN, even if there's a handful of other sellers on it, that sometimes is a bit of a red flag for me because they could end up getting grumpy and trying to kick what sellers are, are there off the ASIN. So you won't necessarily see that big scary drop. 30, 40 sellers down to one, but you will see there's only two, three, four sellers down to one, two, three sellers down to one, two, three, four, five down to one again. That's the same discouraging pattern when you check and see, oh, that one seller that seems to survive every time the others vanish is the brand itself. I'm going to stay off that ASIN as well. Those are the three main ones that come to mind for me. If it meets all those qualifications, those are five things I could check in about 30 seconds once you've done it a few times. 
you can find, figure out very quickly, is this an ace and I'm going to test against or not? Okay, so on that, and I'll, I'll be done here, I swear. Um, no, it's a great question. I love the chance to explain it. I appreciate that. And so basically, I mean, obviously, everyone's got their own path, their own situations and everything. Next week will be the first week where I am actually like full time making a schedule for myself as far as I have the opportunity finally to um, pretty much dive into this as, as, as best I can. And so I'm making a schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, source, 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 source. And then by the end of the week, buy, ship, okay? But basically when I see a keep uh, something, when I'm online sourcing or retail mm -hmm. uh, in store, if I see a pretty good action, a lot of drops in the buy boxes, you know. Close enough to break even to be interesting. At worst. I might take a chance on that with uh, a few test stations. And then when I do the shop, units. yeah, purchase them. I feel like that's a pretty good way to go. It's a little daunting finding those and avoiding the red flags, but this is helping me. I don't know. We'll see. Um, well, what you're going to find is Walmart is your friend on this. Yeah. Because it's hard to beat Walmart's prices. So there's a lot of sellers out there selling and not making any money. I want to emphasize that. There are a lot of sellers grabbing stuff at Walmart, selling it on Amazon at break-even prices. So it sells at Walmart for eight bucks. It sells on Amazon for, let's say, $21, which is about a break-even after all things are considered. And there's a bunch of people selling it. So typically you'd look at Kipa and go, oh gosh, man. I can't make any money on this. Buy it for eight after fees and shipping, all my expenses. It's selling for 21 bucks. That's break even. I, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. And I'm saying, no, that thing drops 80 times a month. That means on Keepa, 80 drops means somewhere between 200 and 1,000 sales per month. And yeah, okay, there's 40 other sellers on it. Fine. But most of them are fighting for the buy box breaking even. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to go out and try to sell 100 units a day on this thing and make a nickel each. I'm going to come in $10 higher than everyone else. And note, just about every time, there's a handful of other sellers there who have figured this out who are selling in that range as well at 30, 35 bucks. I'm going to buy a couple of units and price them at 35 bucks. Buy box is $21. I will never win the buy box. I won't have a chance at ever having the buy box even consider dropping me in there, but I'm going to make sales. Those sales will not show up on Keepa. What's my worst case scenario? I buy a couple of units, cost me 16 bucks. I send them in. They you know, that's a really, really important point you just said there because mm -hmm. a lot of people who do look at the Keepa chart, mm -hmm. they don't know that Jim or Bob or Joe is, is selling way above the buy box. You can't see my sales happening. Yeah, that's, that's what makes it hard to teach other people. Yeah, because really good it does not show you every sale that happens. It shows you every time the product rank changes, and it shows you where people are pricing their product, but it where does not show you sales. So that's what's frustrating for me and why I've lost a little hair over the last year is because <laughs> I keep saying, if you're looking at buy box and you're fixated on buy box and you're making all your decisions based on buy box, you're missing out on all the beautiful margins that Amazon has to offer as busy shoppers pay way more than buy box all day, every day to the tune of millions of people. And yet our industry continues to be fixated on trying to win the buy box. Like, that's cool. I mean, have fun. If you can make money at the buy box price, that's great. God bless you. Go for it. Other sellers are eventually going to find it and it's going to tank. I would rather have two or three units at a time on hand and pop them out there at prices well above buy box. Okay, it works. cool. Beautiful. Last question on yeah. that, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's say, let's say you tested something from Walmart or wherever, and none of this is showing on the buy box keep a graph that you've sold, which you've shown a few times. But if you're selling them at a reasonable rate, well, you're going to go buy a few more, right? You're not going to go buy 10 at that point. You're just going to buy a few more, correct? And then maybe a few more. And then if it's so consistent, you might buy 10 or you might buy a few more. Is that yeah. correct? Very, very rarely. My instructions to my team is we better have an amazing earth moving reason that just wakes you up in the middle of the night to buy more than 10 units of anything ever. Okay. Like cool. it better be worth calling me at three in the morning if we're buying more than 10 units of anything ever. 
as a replin, right? And, and some people are like, oh, well, Jim, I just want to find those magic two or three products that I can sell like 800 times a piece a, a month. Like, okay, we'll get you there. That's a very mature business model with Amazon. Very mature. If you haven't had a $30,000 a month yet with replins, you got no business talking about having two or three ASINs that you sell hundreds of units a piece on every month. Just you don't because it's going to go wrong. You're going to do, you're going to get in over your head. You're going to buy a thousand units on sale, save yourself a bunch of money. And someone's going to go buy 50,000 units of the same thing, the same day for half the price. And you're going to be stuck with the product. You can't move. That's why we want you to learn these lessons. So, you know, we want you riding a training wheel bike when you fall and scrape your knee, not a, you know, 800 CC <laughs> racing motorcycle when you fall and scrape your knee, right? Going 120 mile an hour right? That's the benefit of starting small and making these small educated guesses at the market. But you can build a seven-figure business with that model. Yep. We've seen it over and over and over and over again. We've talked to a bunch of them on the podcast. You know, one more thing. Yeah. (laughs) Last thing, I swear. I did make the mistake uh, defying that rule, you know, I don't know, five months ago. Everyone does. Okay. So I have an inventory, I'm sure, Probably by now, maybe like 12 or so. I mean, I've sold some, but I'm noticing returns. And I started looking into why are some of these things being returned to the Amazon warehouse? And it's, um, I'm, without being specific, it's a bag, a tote bag, mm-hmm. and it's yellow. Okay. The ones that I bought are yellow, banana yellow. But in the image that I chose to feed up or, um, go off the listing from okay that i hopped on the image is more of a lime green color on the image mm-hmm. so a lot of these returns have come back to the warehouse because they're not that lime green sure even though it's a matching upc and all that so one absolutely. of the things that you have to ask yourself when you're getting ready to, to sell a product is if i sold this to 100 picky customers would any of them complain based on the image that i see based on the description that i see And one of the easy ways to pick up on this is read the last 10, 15 comments that customers have left on that ASIN before you jump on it. And if one of their every three or four of them is saying, the color's wrong in the image. I want a refund. This is a scam. You guys are overcharging for this. I want my money. If you're seeing that, don't sell that ASIN. That's another one of the red flags you learn to kind of check is just read the recent comments. And I guarantee you, based on your description, if you go read the comments, read 10 comments, two of them are going to say exactly what you just said. I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Good man. questions, Brian. Thank you. Excellent questions. Good to see you again, man. I just want to go back to the buy box for, buy box for just a moment. Sure. Um, I recently sent in three test items mm-hmm. and I listed it above the buy box. Mm-hmm. But once they received the item, I got an email from Amazon indicating that I will not be featured because my item is not priced competitively. Mm-hmm. So in this case, should I drop my price to what the competitive price is? Because if I do drop it, I'm not going to break even. I'm going to be losing money. So what should so I do in this case? I'm hearing two things that I want to talk to you about right now. If you drop the, your price to typical buy box, you lose money? Well, I, I, no, it would be lower than the buy box. Okay. They want you to drop it lower than the buy box? Yes. Okay. You can very confidently ignore that. Don't okay. pretend it didn't even happen. Amazon okay. would like to think that somehow resellers are capable of sourcing product for cheaper than it exists in the universe and then selling it at a loss on their site. And they would love to have us do that all day, every day because their customers would be thrilled, but it's just not possible. So you can ignore Amazon's price requests. What you will run into sometimes is they will enforce a pricing request, meaning you can't list it at this price. You must, they won't let you raise the price. So before you send inventory in, you want to test. One of the ways you can test is set up a merchant fulfilled. Instead of FBA, set up merchant fulfilled. Set it up, like, hey, I'm going to sell this myself, ship it myself. What price will they let me have? So we always do that so we can test our highest price and see, are they going to let us price it up here at 35 when everyone's selling it for 21? Will they let us sell it up that high? And if they do let us set up that merchant fulfill, well, they'll let us sell it that high FBA as well. We can confidently send it in. If Amazon says, hey, it would be really cool and all our customers would really love us if you drop your price down to give your stuff away for free, 
we can say, no, I'm not interested in Amazon. We'd actually like to stay in business and we keep our prices where, where, where we like them. You can ignore that entirely. Okay. Does that help? Yes. I, before I listed this item, I did look to see what the other sellers were listing at. So I list close to some of what they had listed. So sure. I didn't go above them and I didn't go too low below the rest of them. Yeah. So it, it was close to what the others had listed. Great. And knowing that your worst case scenario is you drop it down to buy box and you get your money back. Assuming the one question I haven't asked yet is how many times per month is this item dropping per Keepa? I believe this one was 43. Okay. I'm, I'm very confident that you can drop that item to buy box level pricing and get rid of it if you need to and get your money back. And okay. odds are, if you're patient over the next four to six weeks, you'll see a handful of sales on that ASIN more often than not. If you don't, okay. you get your money back. And e just making transactions at buy box break even has all kinds of incredible benefits, especially if you're a new seller, which is why we love this strategy. Amazon's learning to know, like, and trust you. You're greasing the wheels on all these new categories you can get ungated in. Right, your your reputation score is rising in the Amazon algorithm. Tons of value. You're getting used to the process. You're you're improving your systems. Worst case scenario, break even. You're putting money in the bank while you're learning, or worst case, breaking even. Yeah, you're doing it right, Gene. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. Good questions. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so, well, I have a question. Uh, uh, it's not about the buy box, but I have an issue with the uh, product safety issue. So okay. that's for safety concern. And uh, Amazon has uh, removed my listing from the catalog. Mm -hmm. um, and um, since they they requested me to uh, provide them with the documents of like UL certifications mm -hmm. and some other documents, which uh, Is this your I product? have requested. Are you the uh, no. seller under your brand? No, I'm not the owner of the ASIN. Okay. But there real? were uh, three, four more uh, other sellers, and I'm also one of those sellers. Is it a toy? Um, uh, no, it's okay. uh, the um, uh, it's a hair removal product. Hair removal product? Okay. A laser, yeah, hair removal laser. So um, then, uh, actually, um, when I was looking, like, it was, uh, I was... Uh, wondering like uh, the sellers were reduced to and i was only remain on that product mm -hmm. and then i received uh, the uh, email from amazon which they were uh, indicating that uh, uh, there was an issue with a customer because the the product was uh, had an explosion or whatsoever and then uh, now you have to uh, submit these documents the user manual and some other documents which i already provided them mm -hmm. But uh, then we uh, came to a point that uh, they were asking for the UL certifications. I also provided that uh, certificate for them as well, but that was uh, for the components. Uh, the UL was for the components, not for the whole product. And um, now they are asking for the UL for the whole product, which I've contacted the supplier and uh, they are unable to provide me the, the document. And they yeah. said that uh, we cannot provide the certifications based on each country's uh, request. Is this a so, U.S.-based manufacturer? No, it's a China-based manufacturer. Okay, yeah, drop it and run. That's my advice. You're done. Move on. Move on with yeah, your life. Yeah. Find more ASINs. You're done. Yeah, so, you so, so now I have, <laughs> yeah, and now I have uh, those uh, products uh, which left an um, Amazon warehouse. So, uh, like, it's um, How many uh, units? 150 units. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, okay. How, what can I do with those units? Other marketplaces, um, liquidation. Okay. I mean, I I've I run into this with clients, you know, that that run into these issues, and it usually that's that's a prime example of, uh, you know, mile wide, inch deep, right? That why you want to mm -hmm. stick to that. But there are other marketplaces to sell stuff, you know. And I pride myself on like Amazon, probably the best place to sell stuff online. Most eyeballs, most sales are going to happen there. But I pride myself right. on being a guy that I'm using Facebook Marketplace. I'm using eBay. I'm using yep. Etsy. I'm selling on Walmart. You know, after I go pick up this load that I'm going to pick up, I'm going to go home okay. and I'm going to go off on Walmart. I've got like a hundred uh, listings that I've got to get up there 
um, for a company that what, I'm working. What'd you do with. on eBay last year, Nate? Did you get your statement from? I got mine today. Oh yeah, we did. We did over three hundred thousand, three hundred twenty thousand. Three hundred. I did about one forty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we love these, these other apparel. warehouse. We love these other sites, man. Yeah. We, we love sell. Selling on. We sell a lot of shoes and clothing, apparel, sports, outdoors on eBay for sure. Yeah. And a lot of these things that you run into that you get restricted yeah. on Amazon, and Amazon pulls mm -hmm. the plug on you. But eBay just. But but you got to realize too that these marketplaces move at the speed of trust. And if you haven't established enough trust, you're taking a huge risk mm -hmm. on anything ingestible, anything mm -hmm. topical or ingestible um, is a, is a bad idea. If you haven't established, well, I, I would, I would say this, I mean, this is just my caution index. If it's coming from China and it's something that goes on someone's skin or goes in their body, I am not selling it on Amazon, dude. Yeah, I do not care. Bad idea. I'm just not. I, Actually, like thousands of these uh, products were sold, and and this is uh, the first time something is happening. That doesn't move that. the needle for me. If it's produced in yeah. China, it just doesn't, because it's going to be impossible for you to go to the manufacturer and say, "Hey, here's yeah. some documents that I need to back this thing up." I'm not going to touch it. There's you, so much opportunity right in the U.S. to sell. You need products. to read the policies, right? You need to really go into Amazon terms. The 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 mm -hmm. product the restricted product policy. Um, mm -hmm. and I can tell you this, I, I have one, um, electronic hand warmer right now. Like, look, okay. you know, it's our brand. It's our brand. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it sells everywhere else, but Amazon's battling me on this one because it has a lithium polymer battery in it. Right. Okay. Well, the, I'm sending them the correct documents for it. I know the rules. I know the regulations and guess what? They're rejecting it. Rejecting, they don't care. It, rejecting it. They're rejecting. not going to take that risk. They're well, very they, risk averse. Yeah. 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 And and I mean, that's, the, you'll, you'll experience that with Amazon and don't give up, keep opening and appealing cases and you may win it, but, um, you know, know what you're getting into. That's why it's awesome to, to hop into these replens and do this stuff safely, you know, so that you can follow the guidelines and start, you know, this thing from humble beginnings and cash flow that I've had clients that started with $250 uh, starting out and they bankrolled that into a, you know, a multi-million dollar a year business sure. now. Sure. But, you but, know, but, but I'm noticing. They are good. Yeah, but I'm noticing like the other sellers which were already in this ASIN. Uh, so now I'm seeing they have created another listing. And this, they are right. selling the same. You product. know what we call that in the business? It, it, it's called you're suspended. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, I would. I would try to liquidate those units to someone else okay. who's willing to take the risk, and and uh, move on to something a little bit safer. Because mm -hmm. is the frustration mm -hmm. and pulling all your hair out over this? You know, I mean it. Uh, it, it's just going to keep happening over and over and over on something like this, especially from China. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, and and you're going to start noticing a trend of um, China is going to start getting cut out, which is a good thing for sellers because they've just made it harder for Chinese uh, nationals to s establish a corporation in the U.S. So we're going to see a lot less China competition coming into the marketplace on products. Um, you know, cause they can operate on such a, they're, they're, they're not going off the U S dollar. They're going off. Well, the, it, yeah, and they, they, they cut corners. Such, China cuts corners yeah. and, and yeah. everyone knows it. And um, you know, back when I sold Microsoft software for a living, uh, it, and that I was, I would, that was what I did the last real job I had over 20 years ago. It was well understood that over 97% of all Microsoft software running in China was pirated corporate level, biggest company, like. They, you know, it's built into the system there that they, they'll cut corners, man. So they'll say that it has these ingredients, but it doesn't. There's no FDA. There's no. So when you start bringing those products over to the United States, you just don't know. There's some great companies and great businessmen and great business leaders in China. Don't get me wrong. But in general, they're characterized by cutting corners and not doing things the right way. And Amazon can't let that fly. They don't want to get sued for someone putting a hair product on their hair and then, you know, causing scarring and burning. Like if that's a U.S. based company, there's FDA, there's rules, there's laws, there's testing, there's right, there's 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 procedures in place to keep those things from happening. So yeah, I wouldn't touch that with a ten foot pole. And I can tell you this, you know, I know without even asking you, Fahim, you did not come through our coaching program and have one of our coaches advise you down this road, man, <laughs> because 
we wouldn't let you, I mean, there's not a person on our team that wouldn't be waving three red flags, you know, hands and feet involved. Like, don't go down that road, man. I'm glad you made some money, but you need to, to take your money and run and find something more stable and secure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Have an exit strategy. Uh, you know, here's here's my rule of thumb on when I go deep, a little bit deeper. You know, you get a little bit more confident in the business and you go deep okay. like that. If I can't liquidate something within 48 hours for what I bought it for, and I know exactly where I'd be able to liquidate it, I won't buy it. I like that rule. Yeah. I really like that rule. Yeah. If I can't, if I can't liquidate it for what I bought it for within 48 hours, you're too deep. I'm out. Yeah, you're too deep. Can't but but try some other marketplaces. Try to spread it out and and move that inventory. But because okay. you know, here's the thing: is think about the time that you're spending going back and forth with Amazon, trying to fight and win this battle. When you can be putting that energy into something more profitable, something more beneficial, mm-hmm. and with a lot less frustration. Yeah. But man, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, man. It's yeah. uh, it's not uncommon to see that sort of stuff with Amazon on those those types of products. That's why you're so good at your job, Nate. You got all that empathy. I'm just like looking at the lesson that I can pound all the newbies over the head with because I mean, we've been well, doing this a long time. I'm well, sorry. I, 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 I'm there, sorry as well, Fahim. I really am. I hate that you going that. through Thank it. you. Yeah. I'm I have also a, new, I, actually new to the e-commerce. Uh, like it's uh, since three months I've started. I made some money, but uh, um, and in the past I also faced some issues, but I, I made appeals and then I won that. But this, the recent one, it's really yeah. tough. You want to yeah. learn, you want to learn replans or do you live in the U S Fahim? Where do you live? Yes. I, I okay. live in Virginia. So you absolutely, you want to, regardless of where you live, it's the same answer. You want to learn replans and sell in the U S products that are based in the U S that's okay. how you ramp into Amazon. Any other way you go, you're taking huge unnecessary okay. risks or you're building yourself a hamster wheel business where you're scanning barcodes all day, every day. And hoping to make a few hundred bucks on Amazon. That's cool. That's great. That caps out at about fifty to $70,000 net profit. And you're running full speed to pull off those numbers as a new seller, right? I want you to build a system. I want you to go listen to podcast episode 754 and hear about a $3 million online arbitrage seller using the replens model with two warehouse workers. And he doesn't touch his business. That's where you can get with replens. That's where replens scales to and how it caps out. And you're you don't have to run around anywhere. You're just checking your numbers, right? That's what you could build. And off of that, you can get into private label products. You can source some responsible products from China and sell them under your own brand potentially, but not today, today, not anytime soon. You need to ramp into that slowly. And uh, I had a, one another question. I'm sorry that I may take uh, no problem. No one time. else has their hand up, so yeah. keep going. Yes. Uh, so regarding the USPTO and the trademarks, uh, well, uh, like what I'm seeing, lots of issues like I faced in recent days. So, so uh, I'm thinking about making the trademarks and stuff, and then making a, a private labeling. Uh, so for for the trademark uh, process. Uh, I mean, do we uh, do we need to have the uh, logo and stuff on a product for the USPTO? Uh, is it a requirement for the USPTO that we should have a product under our uh, logo and under our name? Our, uh, first, uh, we can apply for the USPTO. We can get, uh, get the number, the registration number. I That's mean, you, the Nate. number. Yeah. yeah, this is this is my department. Yeah, I mean, I own a company called Hum and Bird. Well, Jim is has a stake in it as well, and this this is the side of our business where we, with coaching we teach you how to do it. With the, with Hum and Bird, okay. we provide it for you and do it. So we file trademarks for our clients. I've done over three hundred and thirty trademarks now, um, okay. in the last four years, right? And you have to have a specimen that is in permanently fixed packaging. What I do is I take and put the product that you're classifying your trademark under. You have to, like, for instance, right, here's one that we just trademarked right here. Look, I got products all over my desk. So the tattoo salve, an after tattoo care product, Mm -hmm. right? But they needed, they needed the brand name on the product, the the word mark of what it is, right? And they, in permanently affixed packaging. Right. And so, um, basically here, uh, let me see if I have one here. Like here's one, here's one that we did. I made this box, uh, this company called all protective gear is what they Mm -hmm. trademark. 
right? Okay. All here. Well, they sell, uh, you know, um, compression products, right? Right. So right. have the compression products in a box with their word mark on it. So it's not necessarily the logo, it's the word mark. So, okay. so there's a difference between a uh, image mark and a word yeah. mark. So as long yeah. as the word is on a, this is permanently fixed packaging, right? Um, right. If I put the product in a box, take a picture of it like that and take a picture of it with your cell phone, just normal, okay. especially, right? And take a picture of it like this and then open on your counter, holding it in your hand. Do not edit the image uh, yeah. because the trademark office will take that specimen and say, okay, you got a specimen, we'll let you pass. But Amazon will not. So you have to make the specimen image. It's called a first okay. in interstate commerce image that's a specimen mm -hmm. of the product. And it has to have the brand name or the word mark on the box. Sometimes I make a box that is just a white box. And I I, use, I go to uprinting.com to do that. And they'll make me one sample box. And I just put the name of the brand on the box. And I put whatever product in that box. And that's considered permanently affixed packaging. You have to have that to get your brand registry. Not necessarily to get your serial number. Because I've seen plenty of people do it wrong get their serial number and then go try to get brand registry and get shut down. And then they call me going, okay, I didn't take your advice. I tried to do the trademark myself. And that's just my word of advice. Never, ever, ever try to file a trademark on your own with do have an attorney do it. Every time I have an attorney that I've partnered with that does these trademarks every time. And, um, they go through, uh, but you know, it, it, when people come to me after the fact and go, okay, I did this wrong, fix me. It's a lot harder to fix you rather than doing it right from the get-go. So if you need a, a trademark, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put my my schedule link in the chat. And if you guys want to chat with me about this stuff, if you guys have questions you want to ask, but you don't want to ask it in front of the whole group or whatever, you know, my schedule's looking pretty good this week. Get your book, you know, book a 15 minute or 30 minutes to call with me. And I'm happy to spend time with you to, to help you figure it out and help you avoid trial and error, frustration, because this stuff, some of it can be technical and some of it you need people to do it for you. You don't go out and buy a piece of real estate and say, oh, I'm going to do my own title work instead of having a title company do the title work or, a re you know, you don't represent yourself in a court of law and, you know. Uh, you have an attorney do that stuff for you. There's a reason why you hire professionals and and we can help you avoid a lot of the 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 frustration there. So, all right. Hey, see you, Brian. Yeah, Brian, see you. you've got to take off. Fahim, I muted you out just so we could capture a slightly better quality audio because uh, when you, two people are talking, it kind of it fades from one to the next. So, yeah, great job, Nate. Good answers, man. Yeah, and just go. I put it in the chat. Go to hummingbird.com and yeah. you know, get on our schedule. And we're happy to spend whatever time with you, helping you understand that. But, you know, if you're doing anything with your own brand and you're not brand registered on Amazon, um, that's just another one of those you're asking for trouble situations. So happy to help you there. We do a lot at Hummingbird uh, on the Amazon side and the just the technical side to help people do the things that they shouldn't be doing in the business. The only thing that you should be doing in, the, in your business are those CEO level things uh, that the CEO, you'll know, be working on your business, not in your business, if you can. Is that helpful? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Excellent. And um, I have my um, uh, logo uh, on one product, which I uh, recently um, uh, ordered and it's uh, it has arrived. But that logo is like uh, on the uh, tumblers or what do you call the uh, travel coffee mugs? The cups, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the cups. So it is there. But if I'm applying for the trademark or I'm applying for any other category, like for a beauty or for a baby uh, category, right? Baby supplies or these things. So can I use uh, that um, um, uh, as a spice man uh, for the trademark? Can I use yeah. that one? You can, you can actually um, use your trademark on many different products. Let's say I trademarked a product that's in, you know, health and personal care, right? But let's say I wanted to put a product in the automotive category into that same brand. Once you're brand registered, you can do that. But one problem that you're going to have is by printing something on a, a mug, right? Like mm -hmm. this, it's right. decorative. 
it, it you know if if the brand is on the bottom of the mug like this stamped into it that will work but like i th- the best explanation of this is let's say i want to trademark a brand name or a logo and i get it printed on a shirt and then i take it to the trademark office and say hey i've got this t-shirt with my brand name on it they won't accept that because they'll consider that decorative but if it's on the box and it's permanently a fixed packaging like if if on that t- shirt like let's say i wanted to Trademark Humminbird, right? Which they rejected us because it's too close to Humminbird sprinklers, right? But um, think about that. I have a trademark branding agency and I can't even uh, trademark the name of my own business, but neither can anyone else. But if the trademark, if the brand is on the collar of the shirt, that's a different scenario, right? That isn't considered decorative, right? So that's why, I mean, I've had to learn this stuff, you know, through hanging out with an attorney to, to, to you know, so that you guys don't have to go through all that trial and error. But uh, still, I would never try, as much as I know about trademarks, I would never, ever be my own attorney on anything intellectual property or legal like that. It's just, it's just inviting the result of failure from inexperience. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah, Happy to help you. What are some of the other ways that our friend iPhone 2 could start to make some money? And I love that you've been around a decade. I want to start there. That's cool. I love that there's people in our community who can measure the length of time they've been following us by decades. <laughs> That's incredible. We're going to have our 12th live event soon. That's the longest running Amazon seller conference in the world. I just love the longevity of what's been built here. But here's what we have that you should be considering from my vantage point. Maybe Nate can chime in too. Some of the stuff you're well qualified to do now. I think you could start doing some consulting. Just let it be known. Change your name from iPhone 2 to who you really are.com, right? Jimmy Smith. I said, hey, dude, you need your own domain name. Ask jimmysmith.com. Boom. So get a domain name that represents who you are, what you're all about. Start telling people, I'm the guy that knows how to sell, sell stuff online. You need a call to action in your books based on the experiences you've had. Start doing some consulting. Start doing some training. Help other brands get on Amazon. That's the proven product partnering. That's a module inside the proven Amazon course. Actually, Nate, who's with us tonight, he developed that content. It is a phenomenal course that helps you approach any brand who's struggling on Amazon, which is about 90% of them, and say, hey, I can make life easier for you on Amazon. Do you want to pay me to do that? Many, many, many times they're going to say, absolutely, yes. Where have you been all my life? We've got sellers in our community doing just that model at scale, working with brands, getting paid to sell their stuff on Amazon. So now you've got multiple streams of income on Amazon, multiple brands running their own accounts, and you're getting a piece of these things. Beautiful business model that Nate and I could riff for two hours and talk to you guys about. And it's so easy to get into. It's such a low risk model. The pitch that you give these brands is so friendly. It's like, hey, not a big risk here. Maybe you get them to pay you a few thousand dollars to do a few setup things. Many people start off just saying, hey, for free, I want to help you get a better presence on Amazon. And I want a percentage. First couple of clients, you can try it that way. But we like to see you charge and make some money from the day one. So there's that. There's... um Getting into, like you mentioned, I think you mentioned in your question, the uh, influencer program where you're just making videos and uploading them to Amazon on reviews on products. You don't have to be the seller of the product. You're just reviewing products. Beautiful way. We've got sellers in our community who are making thousands of dollars a month, just a few months in, uploading videos, doing reviews on products that they like. It can be anything. You don't have to buy it. You got people, one of my favorite stories, they were at a hotel, walking down the hall, they saw one of those cleaning carts. They stopped and made a video over the cleaning cart, showed how it works, showed the wheels, showed the different compartments, found that exact item on Amazon, uploaded their review video, and now they're getting paid every month for people who've watched that video on Amazon and then buy the product. They're not uploading it to YouTube. They're not uploading it to their influencer account on Instagram. That's the proven Amazon, proven azinfluencer.com course. It's in week three of eight weeks right now. You can still jump in and get caught up easily. Provenazinfluencer.com. Uh, so that's that's a handful of ideas right, right there of what else you could get into. But you're qualified right now based on having been around for a while and having your confidence. You can jump into any of the models we teach. And there's inside the Proven Amazon course, there are easily 30 different strategies for making money on Amazon. And that's just Amazon. And most of them branch out into other platforms as well once you get them rolling. So yeah, Nate, did anything come to mind as I was helping our friend out there who's been around for a decade? 
man. Yeah. I mean, uh, the consultative side of things, I mean, you know, if you've been around for 10 years, there's, there's good probable chance that you know, you know, 99.9% more than 99.9% of the world about Amazon uh, and, or selling on e-commerce. And that's one of the things I think that, that people discount or they, they feel like, you know, they've got imposter syndrome or whatever, but you would be surprised. I mean, I'll go to a trade show. I, I mean, I went to the home show and picked up a client that paid me $4,000 just to build four listings on his um, pallet walls that he sells. Uh, he puts in homes, you know, the, the wood backgrounds that you see on people's podcasts and these little, he takes uh, uh, pallets, removes the, the, the planks off of broken pallets, stains them and p- sells them in kits. And now he's selling them on eBay, Amazon, Walmart, and, and all because I just approached him and he was happy to pay the money because, you know, he's just, he, you know, doing very well locally, but now he wants to branch out and now we're successful with it. So, you know, once you learn how to build a listing on Amazon or you learn a thing or two about, you know, how a business could benefit from utilizing the internet creatively, and it's not just Amazon, right? You become a powerful resource to those, those businesses. And they're usually the best clients and customers to deal with because, they're not they're they're not afraid to spend money to get the to reach their goals. So, yeah, I mean, my recommendation is this: bolt down to one thing first, get it working, yep. get a little bit of confidence, and then work your way out to you know these other strategies as you go. You know, I think a lot of people think that that oh, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. Focus on one thing at a time, Special dial it in, learn it you know, start with the replens model and work your way out. And, yep. you know, by the time you're 10 years down the road, you're going to, you're going to be, you know, uh, diversified in your business so that, you know, if today Amazon, they nuked my account and decided we're not going to allow you to sell on Amazon anymore, you know, I would be okay. I I've yep. got enough diversification in my business that, you know, Amazon is just one spoke in my marketing wheel, but it is a main spoke right now because that's where the traffic's going. Don't try to drive traffic to you. Go where the traffic's already going, right? right. Go where your audience is hanging out, figure out who they are and go where they're going and, you know, uh, fill in the demand. Uh, You know what, Jim, let's move on to this question. You know, someone asked about, do I need to have an LLC or a corporation set up to get started in this business. Let me let me give 10 more seconds to the previous sure. question, then we'll move on to LLC, okay? Sure, I, sure. I just got an order that reminded me that I should have mentioned this one for, for the Proven Conference coming up. We're going to have 40 breakout sessions, 40 different topics. I would say easily a dozen new strategies for making money using the internet creatively at our conference. Theprovenconference.com is coming up May 23rd through 25th, 2024. Join us there. If you want some new ideas, some new partners, some new relationships with people who are doing creative things, you've got to be at that event. Hundreds of people already registered. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Let's talk about LLCs, Nate. Yeah, uh, the conference, it's in Orlando, Florida at SeaWorld. Bring your kids. That's right. Bring the family, man. We got several recessions. You don't need a ticket required to, to Very be. Very kid-friendly event. Now, yep. Going back to corporations and LLCs, Amazon doesn't require it in the beginning. And, you know, if you're bootstrapping a business, which I like to do, I'm a firm believer. I'm, I feel like I'm the king of bootstrapping businesses because to start this business, when I started back in 1995, I never pulled one red cent out of my pocket to start a business. I have a multi-million dollar enterprise now, and I pulled no money out of pocket to start it. I use leverage, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I, uh, as far as early on, I realized that having a corporation gives you 27 different legal deductions, exemptions, exclusions, um, that, that you should take advantage of. And, and if you're just starting out, you can start out with your personal name and your social security number to sign up with an Amazon account, but eventually you're going to want to turn that into a real business. And that's kind of what you're looking for with this is to start a real business. And, and I think that that's what makes it real is. Once you have articles of incorporation and bylaws and you're official and you have a corporate checking account, then it gets real. Then you start taking this business seriously. So I think it's smart to, if you're going to jump into this business and you've made that decision, I think it's smart to at least set up an LLC sole proprietor because not only does it provide you the protection, not a lot of people know this about corporations, but if your business gets into some legal trouble, the business, not you personally, 
is in trouble and you have that protection, which is smart, right? Um, but as you as you move along, if things move along very quickly, now you're going to have to pay catch up and go, oh, now I need to get incorporated and then switch everything over in your Amazon account. I personally think that that an LLC uh, S corporation uh, 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 under that LLC is the best way to go. It provides the best tax benefits for a uh, e-commerce based business. And by the way, that's another service that Humminbird does is we help people set up corporations properly. You know, we've got a team of uh, CPAs and professionals that do that sort of thing. We'll set it all up for you. And that way, when you go and you update all your tax information, and now now is a really, really um, good time to do that because all of the data and the books and, and your bookkeeping all goes under that corporation organized. Your personal stuff stays personal. Your business stuff is in the business. It's organized properly. And, you know, you can start building up some business credit, some business credibility, some business history, right? Um, you can't sell an Amazon business that's all under your personal name. So if you have an exit strategy and, and begin with the end in mind, right? Um, if you're thinking, okay, I'm going to build and grow and create an Amazon business, realize that's a sellable business. But it, if it isn't put under a corporation, it doesn't have any corporate seasoning or some some corporate history it's going to be a lot harder to sell that business if that's your end goal i mean think about what is your exit strategy am i going to build this business and pass it on to a family member or my kids leave a legacy or is it something that i want to build grow and exit right and and you can't do that without a corporation you should have a the corporation is the right way to go but if you're bootstrapping it like i like to do businesses it's okay the first year to do it under your personal name under your social security but after you get hit with that first year of taxes, boy, the IRS, when you're a sole proprietorship, they'll they'll sure stick it to you. Uh, but when you're a corporation, you pay a lot less. And not only that, but there, there are some benefits to having a corporation, right? There are a lot of deductions, exemptions, exclusions that shelter you from some tax burdens. Um, but for me, I, I just always recommend to people that it's really not, a, if you're serious about start a business, it's really not a big expense to get incorporated, set up a corporate checking account, you know, get all, all of it under that umbrella. Um, because not only does it protect you, but now it's like, I own a real business. I'm a real business owner. You're not one foot in the boat, one foot on the dock. You're both feet in that boat and you're rowing, right? Um, your your mindset is a little bit different about it, right? Like that's why, you know, I recommend, you know, thinking about what your brand is going to be. What is your brand name? What is your business name? What do you stand for? Who are you and what are you all about in your business? Whether you're just doing basic replays, yard selling or whatever, every person in this world has a story. That's what connects these customers and vendors and suppliers together is the relationships and it always evolves from a story. That's what will make people remember you. That's what will make them come back and want to buy from you. And so think about that. Who are you? What are you all about? And how do you present yourself? Do you have a business card that's just your personal name when you're handing it to a supplier or somebody that you could do business with in, in this arena? Or uh, or do you just have a business card with your name on it, plain white, and just says, you know, head janitor, <laughs> right? Um, you know, uh, you know, make it, make it, uh, it's the best word for this, make it tangible, right? Like these thoughts in your brain about where you want to go with this business are not just ideas floating around in your brain. Your thoughts are real, tangible, measurable things. You become what you think about. That's why it's important to write down your goals, right? But when you're signing your name on articles of incorporation and on a checking account, it gets real. I get excited. I get more motivated. You know, it's more tangible to, and measurable to me. And that's the way I would do recommend treating it. Treat it like a real business. Uh, we've got a um, Thursday night this week as we're recording this three nights from now. We've got the Humminbird tax expert who's going to do a free webinar in our community for our community. If anyone wants to come, you'll see more details about that in the Facebook group. So if you listen to this later, call humminbird.com and ask for our tax guy or for LLC help. That's why we set this company up. But yeah, great advice, Nate. And you know, the only thing I the only thing that I always say when Nate and I start talking about these topics is I don't like to see people getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready to start a business. And it takes them like nine months because like, oh, I don't have my LLC yet. So I guess I can't start today. 
I, I encourage people like sell something, set it up. Let's go. Let's yep. do something. Right. Yep. But you, you do need to do these things and you won't regret setting up an LLC. There's literally no downside whatsoever. If you go up to any lawyer and say, should I set up an LLC? I'm thinking about, they'll interrupt you and say, yes, set it up. Why wouldn't you? Protects you. Set up a legal entity, put whatever you're about to do under that legal entity. So like Nate just said, if you get, if it gets sued, it's the LLC that's getting sued, not you. Makes sense. There's lawyers with like 150 LLCs. <laughs> it's like they put everything under an LLC, right? Like, yeah, just do it, man. It doesn't cost but a few bucks. Do it, do it right. Um, so yeah, we're here to help out with that. But humminbird.com, H-U-M-N-B-I-R-D.com. But we do have Thursday night, eight o'clock PM. Join us. It's going to be a Zoom just like this. We're going to have Jared on here. And he's brilliant, man. A good accountant more than pays for themselves. Sometimes yep. people think accounting is boring. No, it puts money in your pocket. Come put money in your pocket Thursday night, eight o'clock. We'd love to talk to you or just call the office and have a conversation with him anytime. But, well, this has been a great session, man. We went a little longer than usual, quite a bit longer than usual, actually, but we had some good conversations and questions. So I don't think we missed anything. I'm a bit long-winded, but yeah, going back to what you said there on the tax thing, it doesn't matter what you make in this business. It's all about what you keep. What you keep, yep. That's exactly right. Well, all right, here's one last question. I cannot walk away from this one, Nate. If, maybe you saw this one. Yeah. What is replens? Dude, I love you. Thanks for asking it. Great question, asks Tim. This one will probably end up in a podcast. I promise, for those of you who have heard me answer this question thousands of times, hey, Tim asked, and we treat our newbies with respect, the respect they deserve around here. So great question. Thanks for asking. So on the landscape of Amazon opportunities, there's dozens of ways we've identified to make great money. There are so many opportunities on the most popular e-commerce platform in the history of the world. The company that's launched more millionaires than any company in the history of the world. It is an amazing landscape of opportunity, but we've identified what we believe to be after coaching 10,000 students and doing this for 14 plus years, training thousands of students how to do this, what we believe to be the lowest hanging fruit opportunity that features the lowest risk, the lowest price point for the entry, the highest odds of success. We call it the replens model, and it's simply this, finding the underserved, or to use a slightly possibly more confusing, but more accurate word, the test-worthy ASINs on Amazon. All that means is you're identifying products that are selling well on Amazon, and you're coming in alongside other sellers and selling at a price that's profitable for you. And when you run out of inventory, you are replenishing it. That's where we get the word replen. You sell a few units, you replenish your inventory. Sell a few more, replenish your inventory. Pretty soon you've got a catalog of dozens or hundreds or as some of this multiple seven figure sellers in our community, thousands of these products that you're selling a few at a time. As you need more, you go get a few more easily sourced, profitable ASINs. That's the game. It's like I said, one of dozens of great ways to make a living on the internet, one of dozens of ways to make money on just Amazon itself. But from our vantage point, the reason we're so excited about this model is because for the past seven plus years or so, this is the model that's seen the most consistent results in our community. If you want to hear hundreds of stories of people who are succeeding with that model, get on our podcast, silentgym.com has a link to literally something else no one else in the industry has, hundreds of success story interviews with students from the proven Amazon course, people doing the replens model. That's what replens is. We love it. We talk about it all day, every day around here, 75,000 of us in our free Facebook group talking about the ins and outs of the business. It's not like it's something you can learn in an hour and do for the rest of your life. You can learn the basics, but you'll always be learning more. I've been doing this in my business for several years now. We've been selling Amazon for 14 years. I've been doing replens for about six or seven years. I'm learning new things every day. The, the bottom line is there are millions of underserved listings on Amazon right now. And once you learn how to identify them and bring inventory to them, you can build a beautiful business and have a foundation to go off into any number of other fantastic directions and build even more streams of income using the internet creatively. That's replens. If you have any more questions about it, here's a few podcast episodes I strongly advise you to go listen to. I'll put this list in the chat as well and make sure you have time to write it down. But if you got a pen or pencil, write these down, okay? I want you to get on our podcast, go to silentgym.com, click on podcast, listen to podcast episode 369, 
That's going to tell you all about Keepa, which is the basic tool you're going to need and why we love that tool. I don't make any money to tell you about it. I'm their number one referring affiliate. And I think they've sent me 200 bucks over the past eight years. I've referred them thousands of users. Okay. Keep it. Go listen to 369. Next, 554 and 555. How to find good products to test. You'll love those two episodes. Next, 612. The three step test. Brian and Robin Joy put that together. Beautiful episode. And if you want to be as inspired as we can make you around here and bring a tissue box to this episode, number 754. Nate and I become really close to this guy. His name's Kang. He has scaled this to the level that none of us ever imagined was possible with as hands-free a possible of a system. You got to hear what's possible with this episode. 754, Kang. He's got a $3 million replens business that he doesn't even touch. He just swipes down to reset his stats when he feels like it, <laughs> a couple times a week maybe. Two people run his business for him, plus a virtual assistant. $3 million, very profitable business. Incredible. So that list, again, I'm going to type it down. I'm going to type it as I say it, and I'm going to probably go ahead and call it a night here. But those podcast episodes that I just gave you are 369, and then 554, and then 555, and then 612. You can tell I've done this many times. And then 754. Hey, hey Jim, I've got to run. I'm going to be late. <laughs> yep. You're awesome, dude. Good to see you. I'll wrap us up here. Great to hang out with you. Talk to you soon. Great to see you, brother. 